Welcome to Papa's Workshop. You know, often I have been asked how to determine the square feet of a room. So today I'm going to answer that question and show you how to do it. Let's get started. Well, the first thing, let's define how to determine the area of a rectangle. If you have a rectangle, or let's just say a room, you're going to measure the length and the width of that room. So you take the length times the width, and that's going to equal the area. So when you get ready to measure the room, of course you're going to need a tape measure. And don't forget, bring in a piece of paper and a pencil. And measure across the room from one side to the other. So let's say we take our tape measure and we measure the width of this room. And the width of this room is 10 feet. So I'm going to write that down on my notebook paper so that I have that recorded. And then I'm going to take my tape measure and measure the length of the room. And let's just say that that ends up being 15 feet. So now that we have the measurements, let's plug it into our formula. So I take my two measurements, the 15 feet, which is the length, and the 10 feet, which is the width. I plug those into my formula, so 15 times 10 is going to be 150 feet. Now this 150 represents square feet. That's the little symbol that's used, but you can also just write out square feet. So if you're going to put down a wood floor, you're going to need 150 square feet. But you're also going to need to allow for some waste. And typically the waste material you need to figure about 10%. So if I want to add 10% to my 150 square feet, so if I multiply this by the 10% and I use the 1.101, 1, so it gets my 50 feet in there to begin with, it's going to be 165 square feet that I need to buy. And that's another way that you can abbreviate it. So that's 165 square feet. So now then, how much comes in a box? Well, you're going to have to read the box itself to see how much is in each box because different manufacturers, different types of flooring are going to have different quantities in each box. But let's just say for an example that there's 25 feet in each box. So now how are you going to determine how many boxes you need? All you need to do is take the 165 feet and divide it by the 25. So then the 25 divided by the 165, that's going to be 6 and some left over. So if you want to actually do the, the math, this part really doesn't matter. But when you divide the 25 into the 165, you're going to get 6 boxes plus some. So what are you going to buy at the store? 
you'll end up buying seven boxes of flooring. And that's going to count for the waste material that you're going to have putting the floor down and it's going to be able to round up to that nearest box. Now should you have an extra box left over at the end of the job, you return it back to the store. But it's far better to have a little bit extra than not have enough and have to stop in the middle of doing your job. I want to give one more example that's a little bit more complicated on how to determine the square footage of a space like this that's not just a simple rectangle. The easiest thing to do is be able to divide the area up so that there are several different rectangles. And here's how you do that. One way there's area one and we can take area two and then this is going to be three so now then we can measure the length and the width of each of the areas so for an example let's say that this is 10 feet let's say this is 12 feet we'll use our 15 feet again and let's say that this one is 20 feet down just to this point and then this one is area three, and let's say this is two feet and five feet. We have all the measurements that we need now. So if we write out our formula again, length times the width equals the area, we're gonna have one, two, and three. So we take the length times the width, just as we did before. So that's going to be 15 times 10. That's going to be 150. If we take our next area, that is 12 by 20, what is that going to be? And then the last one, 2 times 5 is 10. So with all three rectangles now calculated as far as the square feet in each one of these sections, all we need to do now is add it up. So that's going to be 400 square feet. So any space that you have, you can just break it down into the smaller rectangles and calculate the square footage. Now I want to give one little bonus tip. If you want to convert this into square yards, how do you do that? If you have 400 square feet, and you want to convert it to square yards, what would be the method to do that? Well, first, how many square feet are in one square yard? So if I have one square yard, that means there's going to be three feet, one, one two and three one two and three so three times three is going to be nine that's the length times the width again equals the area so three times three equals nine square feet in one yard. And you can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine square feet in one yard.
So if you have 400 square feet, how many yards would that be? All you need to do is take the 400 and divide by 9 because there's 9 square feet in one yard. Okay, so 9 divided by the 400, so that is going to be 4, and that's 36, and that's 4 again, 36, and that will continue, and so on. So there's actually 44 yards, and we'd round that up again to 45 yards in the 400 square feet. So this is a real easy way to be able to calculate the square footage of a room so you can determine exactly how much flooring that you would need to buy. And if you wanted to be able to convert it over to yards, I gave you the very easy step-by-step -step method to be able to do that. Just simply by dividing the square feet that you have, in this case 400, and divide it by nine. Nine being the number of how many feet are in one square yard. So I hope this helps today be able to answer the question that I have had asked many times. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.